Hi there, Rabbi Gabriel Botnick from Temple Aliyah here in Woodland Hills. Now, you may have noticed before that on Yom Kippur, a lot of people wear white. And so you might have wondered, what's up with all that white? Especially that silly white robe that people wear, which by the way is called a kittel. So we're going to take the next couple minutes to explain to you this beautiful holiday tradition. As it turns out, we actually have the custom of wearing white on multiple occasions, especially Yom Kippur, at the Passover Seder, when we get married, and when we die. Now, what all of these occasions have in common is that they are all moments of profound transition. On Passover, we celebrate the transition from slavery to freedom. When we get married, we transition from being single, independent individuals to becoming one half of a beautiful partnership. When we die, we transition from this world to the next. That is, depending on your own personal theology, and on Yom Kippur, we transition from the people we were until the people we can become. I like to think of this festive white ensemble as a tabula rasa, a carte blanche, a blank canvas, if you will. And so the question is, how do you want to paint that blank canvas, which is you? Do you want to paint it with the bright, beautiful colors of hope and joy, love, patience, and acceptance? Or do you prefer the dull, muted colors of anger, jealousy, resentment, and ego? Essentially, when we stand there in the synagogue on Yom Kippur, dressed in white, what we're doing is affirming our belief that this year can be better, that we can be better. So wearing white on Yom Kippur makes sense, but what's up with those ridiculous white tennis shoes that you always see people wearing? Well, the point of Yom Kippur is to focus on our spiritual existence, and we do that by neglecting our physical existence. That means we don't eat, we don't drink, we don't have sex, we don't bathe, we don't use perfume or deodorant or scented lotions. I know, kind of gross, but we don't. We also don't wear jewelry or makeup, and we don't wear luxurious, long-lasting, leather-soled shoes. Now, I know what you're thinking, Rubber sole shoes last way longer than leather shoes, and they're far more comfortable. I get it, but listen, this is an ancient law, and one place where the rabbis decided not to make life more difficult for us, so don't look a gift horse in the mouth, okay? And this is where I want to challenge you this year. If you're already in the habit of wearing white on Yom Kippur, then why not try wearing a kittel? Now, there are plenty of shops here in town or online where you can buy one, and besides, Wearing one means you can wear whatever you want underneath. Jeans, sweatpants, just as long as you wear something, okay? Now, if you have not yet worn white, try it out this year. Don't worry about going out and buying new clothes. Just grab whatever you already have and put it on. Now, finally, if you're not quite yet ready to take this major, bold, sartorial step, then when you're getting dressed for synagogue for high holidays, why don't you try skipping the makeup? Put down the perfume or cologne. Don't worry about the fancy watch or the nice jewelry. Right? Trust me, as someone who's often targeted for his fashion sense, I mean, no socks, really? I understand how important it is to put your best face forward. But remember, when it comes to Yom Kippur, we want to be judged by what's on the inside, not the outside. Now you know why on Yom Kippur we wear white, why we wear tennis shoes, and why we don't worry about dressing to impress others. Hopefully, with all this in mind, this will be a truly transformative year for you and for all of us. Shana Tova.